I'm definitely coming back to Waterton. It's... I should have been here a long time ago. My name is Sean Norris and Jesse Mully joins me for our annual camping trip to Waterton Lakes National Park. Upon entering the park, we head down the Red Rock Parkway to get to the Crano Mountain Campground. We've arrived in Waterton Lakes National Park. We got to our campground, the Crandall Mountain Campground. Our site is A6. I really wanted to get this site because I looked at it on Google Maps Street View and it saw that this was a pretty good site with a good opportunity to see the entire valley as well as be a little covered with the trees. It's been raining a little bit off and on since we got here, but right after we got our tent set up, it stopped raining. So hopefully it doesn't rain very much for the rest of the day, even though it's supposed to. We just got back to the campground from exploring the town site. It was pouring rain the town site. As you can see, my hair is still a little wet because it was coming down so hard, even though I had my poncho on. But now, there's no rain actually in this valley along the Red Rock Parkway. I think that the rain right now is just kind of concentrated to around the town site. There's a big cloud that's kind of swirling around the Crandall Mountain that's uh, by the town site. Hopefully, it doesn't rain anymore over here, but it's looking like it might. And within 15 minutes, the rain started coming down. As you can hear, it's raining really hard right now. Jesse and I have taken refuge inside of our tents for now until the rain passes. I think it's supposed to stop raining around 9 p.m. tonight, and it's only about 5.30ish, 5.45 maybe, 6.15 actually, that's the time. <sighs> Luckily I'm protected inside this tent so this is a good test for the North Face Storm Break 3. I'm not wet in here, nothing is wet in here other than when I climbed in here, I, my jacket was wet and got some water in but other than that, completely dry in here. Luckily, the rain has finally stopped. I've been able to get out of my tent, enjoy some of this night. It was supposed to stay raining till like 9, 9.30, maybe even till 10, but it's currently 7.45, 8 o'clock-ish, and the rain has stopped. So now we get to enjoy some of this beautiful campsite. time to get a fire started. I've got this new fire starter that I'm going to be using today. It's flint and steel but it's in this thing with a spring in it so that it does all the work for me. Let's get this fire started. All I gotta do is bang it down like this and sparks come out so let's see if I can get this started fast. There we go. Very long at all. I think this works pretty well. With an hour of sunlight left, we relaxed around the campfire till night came in and we went to bed.
Day two starts with a breakfast of bacon and eggs. While I wait for the rest of the bacon to finish cooking, I'm gonna start eating my eggs here. Mmm, I cooked them perfectly. Great breakfast. Something that I do every year that I come to Waterton is I buy a knife. Usually every year, it's a bigger, better knife, but I don't think this year is gonna to be topped. Because look at this, just the sheath. There's rope wrapped around it. There's the knife itself. Very nice serration. The bottom here opens up and there's a survival kit, compass. The survival kit and it has matches, tweezers, a little razor blade, stuff like that. One of the better survival kits I've seen hidden inside the hilt of the knife. But then what it also has is it has this other compartment in here. There's tubing. I could use this for probably drinking water or you know, tying off a wound like that. A reflective mirror on this side right here and a ruler. And another little knife here with a bunch of little gizmos and gadgets like can opener and such. So this is a really good knife. Don't think I'm gonna be able to top this knife this year. It's just a great package. With the breakfast finished, we head down the Akamina Parkway to do the Row Lakes hike. The hike is around 13 kilometers round trip with the first section gradually rising through the forest and past a creek. We're just under two kilometers into the Rolex hike here. First section, first kilometer or so, was somewhat steep, but manageable. There's a bug in my eye. But the section that we're on now, a little bit of switchbacks, they're fairly flat, so just gotta keep on pushing through. From there, we head into a more open area, giving us great views of the mountain pass we are hiking through. The sight of a waterfall on a mountain in the distance signals that we are closing in on the Lower Row Lake. You know what a good Lord of the Rings reference would be? We must take the pass of Carathus. We got to a trail marker that said the Lower Row Lake. It's just 200 meters up this path here. After that, we're gonna head back to the intersection of trails there and head on towards the upper lake, which is at the top of this very, very steep uh, mountain in front of us here. We cross a bridge over a creek and briefly ascend to the Lower Row Lake, where we take our first substantial break of the day. Our rest stop at the lower lake had to end eventually, and from there we started towards the upper row lake. Yeah. We're 
We're about halfway to the section of the trail that starts to really climb towards the upper row lake. This section that we're on right now is about 1.3 kilometers long, then it's about 1.2 kilometers climb up to the lake. It's said to be pretty difficult and pretty steep. We're just gonna take our time because you know that's what you should do when you're on a tougher trail. Take your time, drink lots of water, take breaks when you need to. As you can see behind me, that is where we are going. We gotta climb that. There's a bunch of switchbacks we can see people on up there right now. We just gotta hit the next intersection of the trail and we start climbing up towards the upper row lake. As we enter Row Meadow, the mosquitoes begin to attack us in droves. This makes it difficult to take breaks because whenever we stop hiking, we get swarmed. Tons of mosquitoes out here right now. They're almost more, oh, it's harder to hike with the mosquitoes, I feel like, than the, alp, than the incline. <sighs> the ascent to the upper row lake is steep and open, but made easier with the view of the wildflowers and the Lynham Ridge in the distance. You got something on your face, Jesse? Mm-hmm, it's called nature. We can see the lake. We're only about 100 meters from it now. We've just about made it. I'm very tired. We made it to the upper row lake. That was a really tough climb. The last 1.3 kilometers to climb up to this lake. Very tough. I'd rank that part as difficult, but the rest of this hike probably rank as moderate. We're at this lake now. There's a few other people here besides us. And I just walked into the water a little bit. Very refreshing on this semi-hot day. It's actually still pretty hot up here despite the higher elevation. We're gonna sit here for another 10, 20 minutes and start heading down. Oh man, this was such a rewarding experience. Uh, despite the hardships of climbing up a mosquito-infested, hard-breathing trail, you get to come out to like a beautiful, serene, almost Bob Ross-esque painting landscape. As we're on our way down, I wanted to quickly talk about a couple things that you should note when you're coming out to Waterton Lakes or Banff or really anywhere in the mountains to do a hike. You should always have your dog on a leash. Very, very important because other animals such as bears, wolves, cougars, they perceive those small animals as prey. So always have your animal on a leash when you're out here as well. And this is more of just a personal pet peeve of mine. It's people that travel with like a speaker in their backpack blaring music. I just find it kind of annoying. Like if we really need to listen to music instead of the sounds of nature out here, let's bring some headphones. Upon completing the hike, we head into the town site for a rewarding dinner at Zum's, followed by ice cream at the Big Scoop for dessert. We head back to the campground afterwards to take in the sunset.
So Jesse went down for a nap about half an hour ago for 10 minutes and he still hasn't woken up so I'm just sitting out here, started fire to kind of keep warm. It's cooling down out here now. But being out here by myself when he's sleeping, it kind of makes you think, you know, about our hike today and everything that we, you know, we accomplished that hike. It was quite a, a victory, like not only physically but mentally, getting up the really steep part, the last kilometer of that hike was so tough. But we did it. And as hard as it was, hanging out at the upper row lake afterwards, so worth it. Wading into the water to cool off my feet, then coming back into town, eating at Zum's, having a great meal. Great day, overall. Really great day. Well, I went to go to the bathroom and relieve myself in the morning, and uh, as I exited after it was finished, I noticed there was a black bear peeking at me around the corner. Mm -hmm.